Agent Nicole Bonnet reporting for duty at the surveillance post. Easy, girl. What, you tired of your desk job? Nicole, I don't think you'll have an opportunity to prove your worth here. You'll have to listen to my friggin' jokes for hours on end. So talk to me about work. I have the first operational task for you. You'll go to the bar around the corner and bring me some coffee. The message to Nick. That's just how it is, Nicole. One minute you're stretching your legs, the next you're stretched out on a slab. I just don't understand why he had to die. It could happen to you, me, anyone. It's an occupational hazard. If it wasn't for the stupid coffee, he'd still be alive. Maybe. To be honest, I'm not sure myself anymore. Anyway, I've got to talk to Nick. Ruth, is Nick in? Not yet. That's Nick for you. Never around, always late, hard to get a hold of. Still, he has got a lot on his plate right now. Drugs, fraud, serial killings, all the good stuff. Sure, he's a success, but he's a lousy timekeeper. So it's time he had someone new to do his paperwork for him. Bonnet? Yes? You're it. Roger that. Good. Before you start, though, I need that report. Sure thing. Should I save it on the server? Just bring me a hard copy. You've got five, and I want you back in here with it. All right, Chief. Ruth? Yes, honey? I need to do the report on yesterday's business, and I just can't get it all down. Poor James. What his wife and kids must be feeling. Why did I agree to fetch the damn coffee? Don't blame yourself. Who could have known? Guest? It's impossible. I knew this kind of thing could happen when I joined up. Don't get me wrong. But having someone actually die in your arms... It sounds like a cliché, but... Listen, I know it's not a great comfort, but we've all lost friends here. You're not on your own, honey. In fact, you know what? Yes. Now would be a good time... A good time for what? To ask to be reassigned. Nobody'd blame you. No. No way, Ruthie. I have to get him. You were saying something about a report? Don't keep the chief waiting. Peace and quiet prevail around here. It's one place at least. When all the alterations are done, it'll be great working here. Ugh, this is heavy. A few more trips like this and I'll have a six pack.
The feeder moves smoothly. The feeder. Maybe I abandoned my cozy desk job too soon. To finish my report, I'll have to consult Nick. He knew best what the scene was. Phone numbers. Aha, there's Nick's. No one's answering. Did something happen to Nick? I don't know what's happened to Nick. He's like Houdini. Nobody knows. He hasn't checked in for a week now. What? He hasn't submitted any reports or discussed the investigation with the chief? James always did his reports for him. Nick hated paperwork. Well, before James died. He asked me to give Nick something. How am I going to do that now? Do you have his number? Yeah, from the list on the board. Oh, that one's down in the Hudson somewhere. Wait, I'll email you his new one. Thanks, Ruth. Message after the beep. Hi, it's Nicole. I've been trying to reach you all day, Nick. I'm doing the report on James's death. His last words were, give Nick a message. Just that. Maybe Nick is right. I won't write too much. In that case, my report is good and done. Warm, fresh printed paper with that nice ozone smell. Every Here you go. One report hot off the press. Thank you. Now then, for your next assignment. What? What next assignment? I can't just stop. You can and you will. Now. Chief, I'm going to clear this case. I'm going to bring the bastard in. No, you're not. It's a little more complex than that. But I've been on it from day one. I even had the prime suspect in a foot chase. And you failed to catch him. Well, I'm not going to catch him from behind my desk. Cool your jets, Bonnet. You'll be assisting Nick with a tough one. Oh, come on. Shut up and listen. Now then, Henry Fairbanks, engineer. Mark Chestum, accountant. Andrew Haig, doctor. All killed last month in or around New York. All the Vicks are white males, age 40 to 45. All done with an unusual kind of blade. Most likely some sort of knife with a curved edge. We're still looking into it. All tortured before death. They all have blue stains and rope abrasions on their arms and legs. And check this. The second and third Vicks had their hearts cut out. The first guy was probably going the same way, but he had a coronary at some point. Fingernail marks on their palms suggest they were all conscious throughout their ordeals. On top of all that, minor injuries suggest they were probably beaten at some point too. Whoever did this is a real piece of work. Did the perp leave us anything to work with? 
No, none of the usual stuff, but in an unusual twist, 16th century Spanish coins were found on all the bodies. Oh yeah? Whereabouts? The first victim had one in his pocket, the second had it under his tongue, the third... Well, you studied psychology. You want to take a guess where the third coin was found? Let's see. The pockets and the mouth are progressively more private areas of the body. The murderer's developing his ritual. At the same time, he's removing the hearts. So, coin number three's going in. The pericardium. Bingo! You win tonight's star prize. So, he's replacing the hearts with gold coins. That's symbolic of a whole load of messed up shit. Is there any connection between the victims? Not much. Well off, educated, everything's on the server under SK-2701. The weird knife had Nick thinking along the lines of ritual sacrifices. Aztecs, Incas, stuff like that. Could be the hearts were used as sacrifices to the gods or some other weird shit. Maybe it's a cult thing. Are there any active cults or sects with a Discovery Channel flavor? Maybe. That's a good point. Follow it up. We could at least determine if the murder weapon was some kind of sacrificial type dagger. Yeah, start with that. Check the file for what we know so far. We've extrapolated some sketches, determined its probable shape, and so on. Okay, maybe I'll find something interesting in the libraries and museums. Yeah, right. Just don't make a PhD thesis out of it. Time is a factor here. I know. Serial killers usually speed up. Any idea when we might expect another present? Yeah, going by his schedule so far, later today or early tomorrow. Christ, okay. I'll hit the Museum of Pre-Columbian Art first. Anything else I should know? That's it. Now get out there and do it. What we presume is the shape of the murder weapon. I want to catch that bastard so, so much. I hope you do, honey. I hope you do. Well, it's doubtful now. Chief's taken me off it. Ah, don't worry. Doesn't mean you won't catch him. The most important thing is we're all on it now. So what about Nick? Nick and I are partners on this new thing. Listen, if he comes by looking for me... Wow! Congratulations! I'm at the Museum of Pre-Columbian Art. You going about the porter? Porter? Yeah, the porter. The one Nick thought was peddling marching powder out the back door. Huh, didn't know that. No, I'm going there to find me a nice juicy murder weapon. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. See you, Ruth. Branch office corridors, currently being renovated. Old garages adapted by the FBI for office use, a tradition going back to Elliot Ness's time. Nice art deco on the building there. They usually have some pretty interesting exhibitions here. Sorry, ma'am. We're closed today until the end of the week. My name's Nicole Bonnet. I'm from the FBI. What? Hey, lady, I'm clean. Actually, I wanted to talk with the director. Director Warren? Yeah. He in there? Where can I find him? Straight ahead. He's messing around in the main hall, you know. Some of these exhibits sure are creepy. You get used to it. <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. I'm Agent Bonnet from the FBI. You must be Director Warren. The one and only. Might I say how glad I am the Bureau is finally paying attention. 
and hiring more Jodie Foster-like agents. Uh, thank you. Now then, what do you have here in the way of sacrificial daggers and so on? Can I ask why the FBI is interested in pre-Columbian art? Well, the type of knife I just described is possibly part of a murder investigation. Hmm, do you know anything about the murderer? I'm not at liberty to comment on that, so could you show me some knives? Certainly, Miss Bonnet. There's a display of obsidian Aztec knives in the main hall. Very old, very beautiful. The priests used them when Cortez was a Tenochtitlan. Fascinating. And they're in the main hall here? Yes, it's a popular display. I think people like to imagine what they must have felt like. Grim stuff. Those Incans had such a great imagination, but there are no knives with blades that look like our drawing. Scary looking mummy. Hope I don't end up like that. I'll walk around the museum with this pot, maybe put something out. I love these places. I can smell the jungle. Is Warren spreading word about the old maps and his talks of expeditions with old friends? It's not this combination. It must have been here that they did their scientific studies. Frankly. Well, nothing I can see that would help the investigation. Hey, how'd it go? You talked to the boss? Yeah, but I didn't really find anything. Well, you know, we don't have everything on display. Sometimes we exchange items with other museums, you know. Oh yeah? Like down the road? In other states? Even other countries. We do a lot with South American museums and universities. In fact, I've just been packing a load of stuff for Bogota. Any knives or other kinds of weapons? Yeah, probably. It's part of the collection from upstairs in the main hall. Can I see them? Well, now I'm not sure I can... Let me talk to your boss. Give me his number. I'll call him. Uh, yeah, okay. His number is... Five, 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 three, six, two, six, nine, one. Unfortunately, he must have switched off his mobile. Huh, no reply. Well, I'm afraid my hands are tied. Uh, sorry, lady. Oh, that's a shame. If I don't solve this knife case thing, I'll be doing regular duties again. Probably chasing old drug busts with Nick Romsky. Uh, well, you know, if you just want to look around a bit... You know, I, I'm sure that'd be, you know... Oh, really? Thank you, sir. That'd be such a help. That's real sweet of you. I won't be long. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, through these doors here. Just, like, don't touch anything, okay? It's almost pitch black down here. I'll ask the porter to turn on the lights. 
What's wrong with the light down there? I don't know. I'm a porter, not an electrician. So how am I supposed to see anything? Sometimes it works. You gotta jiggle it. One up, one down, or something like that. What a relic. It's older than the stuff on display. Wow, this is a heavy one. Can't be empty. Flight case. It's not even closed. Let's take a look. Ah, it's an x-ray scanner. Very useful. They showed us one in training. This is probably only one of the stops in the travels of Warren's historical treasures. It might be useful, but damned if I can see for what. This crate is so heavy, I need muscles on my muscles to shift it. No knives here. The perfect place to shove a folded up dinghy. Inflammable pressurized gas will inflate the dinghy. This crate is so heavy. Well, these are in pairs. And look here, an empty space. Knife, like in our sketch.
This creep. No sign of a weapon or anything even vaguely weapon like. Well, what do you know? The case fits here perfectly, as if it was always here. Do you have an inventory for this stuff, or do I need to call the customs agents? Jeez, I knew it would come to this. Here you go, here's the paperwork. Ha! You see? Right there. Two ritual knives. Where's the second? I'll have to talk to Warren about this. Sure. Whatever you like, I'll probably get fired from all this anyway. You leave everything in order down there? Just as you left it. You can trust a Fed, right? such an idyllic place could be a crime scene. Evening, officer. I'm Agent Bonnet, FBI. Jeff McGregor, NYPD. Guess you got the short straw, huh? Yeah. The investigator's already been? Yes, ma'am. Did their thing and took the body downtown. And you're? I'm waiting till the guy with the keys comes and locks up the building. How is it inside? It's a rich man's place. Pretty tidy, though. No sign of a struggle anywhere. And the victim? Killer gutted this guy like a fish, right there on the pool table. Put his heart in the corner pocket. I've seen a lot, but uh, I almost blew chunks at that. Vic must have been knocked out before the gory stuff happened, hmm? Guess so. Uh, CSI guys were talking about an injury at the base of the skull, but beyond that, I have no idea. Hmm. Well, thanks, McGregor. Guess I'll go take a look for myself. Yeah, this is the biz. Old Victorian houses. Always wanted to live in one. I'll take it just in case. Where are the old school guys? Time has buried them, I guess. I don't need it now. There's a lot of knickknacks in here. CSI took samples from the containers on the table. Photographer left an evidence number card behind. This may be evidence. I can't just pick it up with my bare hands. CSI took samples from the containers on the table. Photographer left an evidence number card behind. Possible the perp was socializing with the victim? One bottle and one glass knocked over. Whiskey stains next to that. Possible the perp was socializing? CSI took samples from the... It looks like the armchair was moved. Did the guys miss something? The armchair. There's a business card in here. I doubt it belonged to the murderer. 